East Asia Forum, 5th of March 2024, Pakistan's economy will be measured in terms of foreign debt, primarily Chinese, in 2024. China is the country that has loaned Pakistan the most to establish a Gwadar corridor to the Indian Ocean. The administration chosen following Pakistan's contentious election season on February 8, 2024, will have to deal with the complex issue of Pakistan's foreign debt. Pakistan's international debt commitments seem manageable. The State Bank of Pakistan projected it to be 124.5 billion US dollars, or 42% of GDP, by mid-2023. In terms of international standards, this is not high. However, the nation's yearly foreign exchange profits from exports are insufficient to cover import costs. Without remittances, Pakistan's current account deficit for 2022-2023 was $30.5 billion. Remittances from Pakistanis employed overseas made up nearly 90% of this, with fresh foreign borrowing accounting for most of the remaining amount. In 2024, domestic issues will prevent higher export revenues. For instance, Pakistan's primary export is textiles, but in 2023, textile manufacturers stopped their facilities due to a decrease in their capacity to produce for export due to rising electricity prices. The Federal Investigation Agency's 2023 crackdown on illicit foreign exchange brokers stabilized the official rupee US dollar exchange rate. Still, it also deterred Pakistani expatriate workers from returning their earnings to their own country through official means. Rearranging foreign debt payments will become a top priority for Pakistan's government following the elections in February 2024, as the country's export earnings are not expected to rise. The administration will have to deal with a wide range of stakeholders. These stakeholders are listed in the State Bank of Pakistan's most recent quarterly report. As of September 2023, Pakistan's government and state-owned businesses owed 99.1 billion US dollars of the country's 128.1 billion US dollars in foreign debt. The government owes international organizations, including the World Bank and Asian Development Bank, 37.1 billion US dollars. This is usually a low-interest, long-term, concessional debt that must be repaid in manageable chunks throughout 15 to 30 years. The Pakistani government also owes the International Monetary Fund, IMF, an additional $7.8 billion. Additionally, the government of Pakistan has taken on fresh debt with non-concessional terms. This typically took the form of offering to sell Eurobonds, a foreign currency debt instrument, and Sukuk, an Islamic financial certificate. The new loan, which totals $7.8 billion, may be repaid over terms of 5, 10, or 30 years, but it will probably come with exorbitant interest rates. Additionally, foreign exchange obligations result from agreements with China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange SAFE, the banks of the United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia. In recent years, SAFE has agreed to provide $11.7 billion in support to Pakistan, including some swaps and special drawing rights allocations, in addition to a portion of their funds deposited into Pakistan's central bank. 18.1 billion US dollars of the remaining amount is foreign debt owned by Pakistani banks and private companies. That leaves Pakistan's government with 37.9 billion US dollars in external debt, of which 6.1 billion US dollars comprises commercial loans without specific terms and 26.1 billion US dollars of other bilateral loans. Not much is known about the other bilateral loans. It's possible that Chinese financial institutions offered many to fund the initiatives Chinese businesses carried out in Pakistan as part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Since 2014, these initiatives have been part of the Bilateral Infrastructure Program for the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor CPEC. It's unknown what CPEC's financial details are. Pakistan arguably hosts the most Belt and Road projects globally, with an estimated US$62 billion US dollars spent on CPEC. According to the China Global Investment Tracker, Pakistan received 16 billion US dollars in corporate investment and 51.2 billion US dollars in contracted work between 2005 and 2023. As an alternative, aid data found that Pakistan undervalued its cumulative 45.9 billion US dollar debt to the World Bank and that Pakistan's overall debt to China between 2000 and 2021 totaled 67.2 billion US dollars. Aid data explains the general causes of recipient countries' underreporting of their debt to China. 
One is that the debt originates in China and enters a country through loans to Chinese-owned businesses or subsidiary shell corporations that construct, initially finance, and manage infrastructure projects in the recipient nations. In Pakistan, many of these businesses are independent power producers who supply energy to the country's regional electrical distribution companies owned by the state. The recipient nation's government avoided adding to its debt load because of this building. However, the government of Pakistan bears some of the blame for the independent power producers' foreign debt. Although they are paid in Pakistani rupees, they must use foreign currency to pay off their debts to creditors abroad. The IMF's projection of 25 billion US dollars for Pakistan's debt servicing needs in 2023 to 2024 predates Pakistan's disclosure of its external debt. While these factors also influence Pakistan's need for foreign money to pay off its debt, the IMF is unlikely to consider these developments. According to Pakistan's central bank, 11.3 billion US dollars would be rolled over between 2023 and 2024. Furthermore, the government of Pakistan projects that sales of Sukuk and Eurobonds will bring in 1.5 billion US dollars, while fresh commercial loans will bring in 4.6 billion US dollars. Still, it is insufficient. Given Pakistan's ongoing negative trade balance, Pakistan's new government urgently needs to begin talks to reschedule a portion of the foreign debt due in 2024. China will probably play a significant role in that endeavor, or Pakistan will have to give up territory to China, which China desires. Given the current issues facing Pakistan's financial sector, it might be challenging for Pakistan's negotiators to anticipate concessions from China. If Sri Lanka's debt restructuring concessions from China in October of last year hadn't raised doubts, there would have been cause for cautious optimism because it's possible that Pakistan would end up paying China more in debt than Sri Lanka will.